welcome. Today I want to share a project that was inspired by Nina Ribena. If you're not familiar with her, she's a wonderfully talented and creative mixed media artist. She has her own channel and a Facebook group, and I'll post the links to those two down below. She recently made a little tag booklet and inspired me to make a tag booklet too, but I'm doing mine in an accordion style, so it'll be a tag um, accordion tag journal, I'm calling it. <laughs> and I have these wonderful images um, that I got from an Etsy shop on, and I'll leave a link to that as well, because they really inspired me for this project as well. So um, I'm showing you these um, master boards I made a while ago with uh, those uh, kind of mostly neutral papers as you can see and so I'm going to use those to make my tags. Now if you wanted to decorate already made tags or maybe tags out of scrapbook paper that would work great too. Um, I'm showing you the, the what the images look like before I cut them out and um, I have some extras there in case I need some more um, images because I'm not sure exactly how many tags I'm going to make. I thought five or six, um, but I ended up with um, five because I had to make ten images <laughs> to make, you know, the, the booklet with five pages, as it were. You'll see how that goes. So um, the first thing I want to do is put gesso on my background because I need to tone that all down and kind of unify it a little bit. I have three of these um, master boards, I'll call them, and so I'm going to do that for all three. I'm going to put the gesso on and then I'll let it, let them all dry before I continue. Okay, my master boards are all dry and I'm going to use some paints to get my background, which I am taking a cue from the backgrounds that were on the images that I cut out. Um, because I really like that look. So the first, the colors I'm using are an, uh, a brown, it's called raw umber. Um, I'm using a golden fluid acrylic because I wanted it to kind of, you know, run around like that and <laughs> kind of be messy. And um, that's very fluid, and but I'm still even adding more water to it. I didn't really want those lines, so I'm going to blot that a little bit. And I Anyway, I put the brown on all four sides. I let it run a little bit, but I do blot some of it back. And then I continue with my next color. And, you know, if you're doing this um, process, you just keep doing this kind of, um, this idea over and over again until you get your background looking the way you want it. So the next color I'm using is this... Um, color. It's a yellow. I can't remember the name of it, but if anybody wants to know, just ask a question below. And um, it's not a fluid acrylic. It's just regular acrylic. So I'm adding it with a brush that already had water in it and then adding some more water. So again, continuing with this process, I'm going to add more brown because I took away a little bit too much and use my brush with water started getting a little bit um, kind of a muddy color that I didn't want there and adding more water, blotting some of it back and so on. And then finally, I'm going to use the Titan Buff color that I showed there at the beginning. But I remember that I have that in the High Flow acrylic as well, the same color, it's Titan Buff. So I want to, uh, now that I've added all this color, I want to tone it down a little bit. Um, because I don't want my background to be too dark. So I let that run around and blot it back a little bit. Um, and that dries a lot lighter than it looks right there. So it turns out just fine, which you'll see in a moment. I do this on all three of my master boards. And they all look a little different, as you can see. Just slightly different, but that's okay. My cards don't all have to, I mean, my tags don't all have to look the same. Now, I'm using that tag as a sample to cut my tags that I'm using. So here they are. 
and I had some leftovers. I'm just showing you that, of course, I'm going to save those and use them for something else. I have my paint colors. I have my images. I have my paint colors. I am trying to stick with these colors for the entire project because I want my project to be uh, cohesive and flow together and, you know, all the, the um, tags be the same the same style and the same colors. So those are the colors I'm using. I took out a um, color that's kind of like a light turquoise, not light turquoise, what is that, like a light aqua? And I thought it was green, more green, ugh. So <laughs> sometimes I'm not great with color. So I took out a color that is actually a light green. You can see that there. And I made a sample tag um, just to make sure that my idea was going to work and I'm just showing you that I'm going to glue one tag to the other so I can have a two-sided page and you'll see how that works if it doesn't make a lot of sense at the moment. You'll see how that works later on. I have some stencils and again I'm taking my cue from the background of these lovely women um, and the backgrounds that they were originally on um, had some square and rectangle shapes in the background and some circles. So that's what I'm aiming to do, but with paint. And um, as you can see, you saw before my circles that I punched out. So now I'm just trying to decide which woman to use on that tag. And that's really a very subjective. It's really a matter of your taste, your opinions, what I think looks good, you may not think looks good and vice versa. So um, I decided to use that lady and I'm going to make some rectangular shapes in the background. I'm putting on just a little bit of paint so it dries really quickly so I can keep going with my project quickly and if I go outside of the lines as it were you saw there I have a wet wipe and my paint's still wet so I can you know clean up my little mess if, that I made there. And then I'm going to put another rectangular shape behind the woman. I use two or three rectangular or square shapes behind each image for each tag. And I just use the colors I, uh, that you can see right there. I just use the colors that I thought would look good. If I had a woman with a red skirt, I wouldn't put that reddish color behind her. So that's why I'm using the um, mint green sort of color and the peach color. Now, most of these women are look like they need something to be standing on because a lot of them are kind of uh, look like they're dancing or jumping around. And so I'm going to use that dark um, paint color it's kind of like a metallic black, I would say, um, as the base for them to be standing on. And I thought that worked out well. And using those, uh, that stencil really was a good stencil <laughs> to use for this project. And there's the base that she's going to be standing on. And the next thing I'm going to do is I have to figure out where to put my circles. And I'm going to do some stamping. Now this, really all of this is, as I said before, quite subjective. So you just have to try, and you know, I always overdo with things. So I have a bunch of circles, <laughs> way more than I need. And um, you just put the, I, I put the things down and see what I think looks good. Um, again, very subjective. Um, I probably overthink it quite a bit, but... <laughs> um, you know, that's the way it goes. So um, I ended up uh, fiddling things. I even thought of about using a different lady, <laughs> but um, I kept going and persevered and I um, found the circles that I wanted to use with her. I just kept trying a bunch of different circles and sizes. I wanted to vary the sizes and, and the colors. <clears throat> and um <clears throat> excuse me I was not happy with that turquoise color which is one of my favorites teal turquoise but um I ended up not using it at all which I usually <clears throat> use sorry that color in a lot of things so what I ended up doing which you'll see in just a moment 
is, um, well, you won't see it immediately. I'm still trying <laughs> every kind of combination. And then I finally figured it out and I put, painted some gold paint onto a little piece of light cardstock and cut out or punched out another circle and now I'm so happy with that, with that circle and the metallic gold was a good addition to the I use a couple more in other with other tags it was a good addition to my um to my collages because it kind of works well with the um style of these I think so I'm still fiddling with things and now I'm going I've got that figured out and I'm going to do some stamping I pulled out some stamps that I thought would work and that set works really nicely with this project and then I also have a script stamp and a um uh what do you call it a uh that well wait a minute that one right there with which also has numbers and lines I in retrospect I think I shouldn't have used that stamp with the lines and numbers there that I put to the side because it was a little bit too busy and dark but I did end up using it and it all it's all fine but you know next time <laughs> I know better now as far as the circles um I tried to put the odd numbers on there you know the uh, three circles on each tag but I think on this one I ended up with two um, I might have added a third one later on. I can't remember at the moment. So I did my stamping. As you can see, I was trying to do some light stamping. I didn't use the stamping blocks. I didn't want it to be that perfect. I should have left it like that, but I uh, did overdid it. And so uh, later on, I tried to sand away some of that darkness that I just stamped. But I ended up making it worse, I think. So, um, but again, it's all fine. Um, I don't know that anybody would else would notice it. So, I think I've got. See, I don't like that, but um, I get my sandpaper out and I sand it. You'll see, it's just it doesn't go well. But I le I think I left it like that. And um, again in the grand scheme of things, it's not a big deal. So now that I've figured out my um, arrangement, everything is to my liking. I'm going to glue everything down. I use my glue stick for almost everything on this project. Um, as long as you have a good, strong glue stick, it works fine. It holds really well. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Just gluing, just gluing. Still trying to figure out how the heck I'm going to put, put that circle down. Oh my gosh. Why didn't I cut some of that out? I don't know. Okay, so I want to just get it in the approximate right place. Then glue my lady down. Um, when I fussy cut, I don't always do it perfectly, so if I have any white showing, um, I just put a little brown distress ink on those spots, and that takes them away. Makes it look great, I think. So glue carefully. You don't want to be too rough and tear your image, especially those legs and arms. And... There you go. See, I think it looks fine, um, even with the dark stamping that I didn't want. So I'm happy with that. I am going to show you... Um, oh, I'm still not happy with, <laughs> with the stamping. I forgot that I did that again. More, more smudging. And anyway, I'm going to show you one more tag, um, hopefully a little bit more sped up <laughs> that I made and then I just made the rest of the tags in a similar fashion. I cut out um, a piece of book page as you can see there for this lovely woman. I love this image but I felt like the colors that I was working with, the paint colors, were not all conducive to her beautiful red and off-white um, 
outfit. So I thought the book page was a good neutral to use behind her as one of the rectangular blocks. I think I did that with one other image. So that's going to be one of my blocks. And then I will, um, uh, I will use some paint to make another one. And I decided to, oh, that's where I used that little, that color that I thought wasn't the right color. I think that's the only card I used that one on. And then um, wiping away my extra mess there. And um, with this one, I believe I add another little square at the top there because I just felt like it needed it. A small one maybe. Oh, first I'm going to um, put the base for her to stand on. And then jumping ahead a little bit, um, for this one I chose some small circles because her dress is like a large circle already, so I thought if I put another large circle on there, it would just compete too much with her dress. And, you know, I want her to be the focal image and the other, um, the background to be just that, a background, so I didn't want it to compete with her outfit, her beautiful outfit. <laughs> so, um, there's the other square, or, uh, is that a square? Square-ish. And there. I'm happy with that. Now I'll do my stamping and my circle placement. So I will um, try, you know, again, a million different circles and <laughs> settle on three that I like. So did I just say this? I tried to use threes. <laughs> Um, of the circles on each tag. I think I did that for the most part. For the blocks and the rectangles, I think I just used um, two on most of them. But now I can't remember. It's all a blur. I made so many. <laughs> and I'm gluing on my circles first, and I'm going to do stamping. I'm still going to try using that number um, and line stamp, which I now wish I hadn't used, but it's, like I guess that, again, it's not a big deal, but obviously it still bothers me. <laughs> so I have my three smaller circles there. I like those, and I don't want to compete with the lady, the lady's dress, so I think those complement her nicely. And, um, again, using uh, pulling out the stamps that I think will work. Those stamps and the script stamps worked really well for this project. I'm not sure what I'm saying there. <laughs> but anyway, I do more stamping and um, then glue the image of the lady there. I made some boo-boos with my stamping, I'll admit. Um, I didn't want it to be too dark, and then so then I would stamp again and kind of make it a little messy. Um, but in the end, I didn't really notice all that. It's just at the time that you're doing it, you just, you know, kind of regret <laughs> some of the decisions you make, but that's okay. It's all a learning experience. So again, gluing this down um, and gluing it carefully so I don't tear my image. And there you go. There's my second tag. I'm coming back with all of my tags. I'll do a little flip through um, at the end so you can see them all. I'm really happy with the way it all turned out in general. And I learned some things. I am going to show you how I'm putting this together. And I actually made a boo-boo here. <laughs> it could have been a big boo-boo. 
Um, but I left this in to show you um, that you really need to think ahead <laughs> better than I did uh, when you're making a project like this. Okay, so I'm gonna point, I figured out which cards I am going to glue together in the order of the pages that I, the order that I want them in. And really all I did was I just uh, decided that lady was gonna be in my cover and I then um, just made sure that um, there were not women that were too similar side by side because there are um, two or three that are pretty similar, I think. So I'm using my um, Dries Clear Art Glitter Glue. It's not glitter. <laughs> it works really, really well with paper. And I like to use it a lot. It's a lot easier to use than the Fabri-Tac, which I used to use. That's a great glue too, but man, it's so hard sometimes to get that out of the squeeze it out of the bottle. And I've cut some fabric strips that you can see there. Oops, sorry. Um, I cut some fabric strips out of an old pillowcase um, that I have. And I wanted, I chose that because I didn't want a very heavy fabric. And so that's lightweight enough, but it's strong enough to work for this project. And, you, and my cards, my tags, I mean, are not all the same exact size. So I have to trim those up and um, you know, to make them fit right. And my fabric was a little bit too long as well, but you know what, you can always, I say you can always cut back, but you, it's hard to add, you can always take away things, but you, it's hard to sometimes put things back. So I've got my two cards there. That's looking pretty good. I'm showing there that I'm thinking about sewing around those cards and now I'm going to attach my second set of cards. Uh, I keep calling them cards. They're tags. And this is where I make my boo-boo. But we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> so I decided to trim the tags um, so they're the same size first. Because it's a lot easier than after I glue it down. <laughs> and so I did that. I'm gluing down the... Um, the fabric strip first that will be in between the the first page and the second page and I'm so far so good but I'm about to make my big mistake <laughs> the suspense is killing us right okay so um, because I don't you know I, I try to be careful but I'm forever doing things crooked backwards upside down my card is crooked I mean my tag I keep saying card so I tried to straighten it and then I thought okay I'm just going to redo it I wasn't happy with that it was still crooked so I'm just redoing that so I should have left that in okay I mean I should have cut that out all right so now I'm doing it from the other sides I can see what the heck I'm doing and it won't be so crooked it doesn't have to be perfect but I just didn't want it to be so obviously crooked all right, here's where things start to go wrong. <laughs> I glued down my second tag without first gluing down the next fabric piece that I should have done. I was so pleased with myself. I <laughs> thought this was, oh, I was looking so good and my tags are, you know, relatively straight, yay. Um, and I think it looks great and they they actually are pretty close to the same size and everything wow all right and then I sh I'm I uh, have not realized yet that I made a mistake I'm going to punch the holes at the top of the tags and put those little um round um doohickeys I can't remember what the names are those are called the little hole punch round things <laughs> I'm going to attach those so I wanted to show you my, you know, my whole process before I move on. But as soon as I realized my mistake, I stopped recording. And luckily, I was able to 
pry apart that those two cards and I'm showing you there that I was able to pry that those two apart the glue had not completely dried and put in that piece of fabric which I should have done before so now I'm showing you the way that I should be doing it before we proceed further <laughs> um, I'm really lucky that I was able to take those apart because this glue dries so fast I didn't think I was going to be able to and I thought I was going to have to rethink my whole project. So that's the way you should do it <laughs> uh, properly, is you attach your two fabric pieces and then attach your tag to the, to the other one. Except when you get to the end where you only need one fabric piece. So there you go. That's how we should be doing this. And then I show you that the next one we'll go there and so on. Okay, so I proceed with that and um, that all works fine and I will come back in just a minute okay, and show you the booklet. end result. I just really love the way it turned out. I was going to add words on each tag but then I decided it was a little too plain for me so I made this little simple closure. It's really more for decorative purposes and I had these um, pieces that I had cut out circles for another project and I used that. I put it on here and realized that the face fit right there so I thought that you know looked cute. I just cut it down to size. I glued a couple of pieces of extra paper there and stapled on these two sari silk ribbons. So really easy and here's my little um, journal. I decided I'm not going to sew around here. I just took a pencil and lightly put some lines in here. I might go over it with a pen. I may add words at some point, but for now, this is the way I'm leaving it. I just love the way it turned out. I'll hold it up a little bit and so you can see whoops, um, how I just really love the way it turned out and the images are just stunning, so that's what really makes this project, I think. And there you can see all of the pages. And you know, I can always make this the cover. I can make this the cover. I can make this the cover. So it's really versatile. I love the way that turned out. As I keep saying that, <laughs> I'm so pleased with myself. I'm trying to find the lady again so I can put her cover back on. So thanks for watching. I hope if you've stuck it out this long, uh, I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.